Okay, let's talk a little bit uh, about plastic deformation uh, now that we have some crystal structure under our belts. So we, we know that you know, atoms will move to new positions when you plastically deform it. So in fact, where my paper clip go, there it is. Right? If I take this little paper clip and you know, I, I put it on too many pieces of paper and it deforms permanently, well, there's some elastic spring back like that. Right? There's some elastic spring back see it better on this camera, yeah, but then there's obviously some, some permanent deformation. And what's happened is at the atomic level inside, we've got planes of atoms starting to move past each other. Um, so what I want to do is I'd like to cycle back and look again at our stress-strain curve for um, a typical metal. We do look something like this. Okay, let's see if we can define a few things a little bit more carefully. <clears throat> So, you know, we certainly know that we've got the Young's modulus here. What I'd like to look at is when the deformation becomes um, becomes permanent. And what we had said originally when we first looked at the tensile test is, well, probably somewhere close to the end of the straight line. Okay, so you remember here with in this, this straight line region here, we said that stress is directly proportional to strain. It's directly pro proportional through this constant of proportionality, the Young's modulus. So when the, the line ceases to be straight, well, we could just call that the proportional limit. End of the straight line. But that's actually of very little practical use to us because, sure, if, you know, your professor draws a big orange dot uh, on the line, well, it's clear where the end of the straight line is. But if you remember from the tensile test that we did, the, the end of the straight line is very difficult to, to determine exactly where it is. Um, so it's not really very practical as a definition of uh, plastic deformation. In fact, it's not entirely correct either uh, because there's a little region here which I've identified. And I've actually exaggerated this. Okay, I should, I should make a note of that. This is really not to scale. I've, I've um, amplified it a little bit uh, considerably, but there is going to be some region after the proportional limit where you have what we would call nonlinear, but still elastic. So nonlinear elastic deformation. Okay, this region here, governed by Hooke's law, was both linear and elastic. So most materials. Uh, well, all materials will have a little bit of nonlinear elasticity. Metals, not very much, but a bit. Um, and so if we want a thorough understanding of this um, plastic deformation, we need to appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> it's still elastic. And then the other thing I want to dis discuss is what about the peak of the curve here? Well, the peak of the curve, um, we can go ahead and I'll give you the name for it. It's called the ultimate tensile strength. goes by a few other names, sigma UTS, or sometimes just UTS, uh, or sometimes sigma TS. <clears throat> so that's the peak of the curve, and I want to explore that actually in a little bit more detail. What happens right there? <clears throat> so to do that, I've drawn in a, a little tensile specimen, okay? One of those specimens we put into the tensile test machine, we stretch it out. Now, if I say identify this as the initial unloaded sample, what's going to happen when we um, when we um, what's we call it when we when we put it under load? And what I'm going to try to do here, if this cooperates, is okay. There we go. Copied it out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stretch it out a bit, okay? So we can describe a certain type of behavior here. This is, through this reduced section here, the elongation is distributed across that reduced section. So we call that uniform deformation. And say, if we want to be careful, we could say initially this is uniform elastic. So if I identify that as region 1, well, on this curve over here, region 1 would span from the start of this curve all the way to 
the end of the nonlinear elastic region, okay, where it starts to accumulate plastic deformation. All right, so that's fine. Um, what if I continue to load beyond that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another sample over there, okay, and I'm going to stretch that. I'm going to stretch it even more. So now what I'm trying to describe is what's happening in this region here, okay? It's starting to plastically deform. It's permanently deforming, right? It's permanently changing oh, that fracture. That wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, it, the sample is permanently getting longer, okay? But it is still uniform. <clears throat> uh, uniform plastic. Okay, so I'll call that 2, and I'll identify that over here as 2. So then the big question still is, well, what, what's happening there um, at the peak of the curve? And so what happens at the peak of the curve is this. Okay, so I'm going to copy one of these samples here, and then I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra space here to, to work with. So I'm going to actually copy that sample over here, and then I'll try to replicate what we had done um, up to the UTS. So this sample has gotten significantly longer, right? You'll appreciate that. So this is, um, you know, at the UTS. But why does the engineering stress decrease after the UTS? And that's what I want to show you here by adding something to this. So somewhere inside the, um, inside the specimen, in the reduced section, you get a little localized deformation. The plastic deformation is no longer evenly distributed. Suddenly, in a small place, it gets smaller. Okay, and that might look a little bit like a neck, um, you know, neck of an animal or something like that, or of a human. I don't know, it doesn't really, but <laughs> it's called a neck. That's actually what we what uh, we describe. And so, at the UTS, we could say that we have the onset or the beginning of um, necking. And it's because of this sudden decrease in cross-sectional area, area gets very small, that we see the engineering stress decreasing. So the engineering stress decreases, and it decreases because the area gets so small here. But remember, this equation is sigma is equal to force over a naught. It's a constant. So really, what we're observing is the force decreasing. The force decreases because the cross-sectional area gets so small. <clears throat> if I were to plot for you the so-called true stress, that is the stress that the material is actually experiencing, it would look something like this. But we're not going to explore that actually in this course. But that would be the stress that the sand material is actually experiencing in through there. And in fact, it's interesting to note that the metal actually continues, uh, continues to get stronger or to strengthen. Okay? Even though we see this engineering stress decrease, that's only because the cross-sectional area has gotten so small there. So this to finally just give you the last little bit of terminology, this type of deformation here, the necking, is referred to as localized plastic deformation. Localized plastic. Okay, great, thanks a lot.